What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new video. Today we have a comeback for the series In the Mind of Maxic. If you don't know the series, I used to make this in Battle for 5 a while ago. A lot of people really enjoyed it, so I thought it might be a good time to make them right now. Uh, they take a lot of effort to make, so I hope you guys are going to enjoy them. If you don't enjoy them, uh, feel free to leave a dislike. If you enjoy them, feel free to leave a like. I normally don't ask for this. Um, and if you have feedback, Feel free to be absolutely ruthless in the comment section, um, but at least let it be, you know, something I can work on so we can make this series a lot better than what it is right now. Uh, but I think it's good to start. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of it. And then we're going right into it. You'll understand the concept really quickly. And I really hope you guys are gonna enjoy and learn something new. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, we got a clip with the M5A3. Uh, which means it is a close to medium range combat weapon. Um, we're playing Renewal Breakthrough on the last sector. So that's the building part. And of course we're trying to capture the objective. I'm here in a plane uh, and I will be parachuting down. So that's the first things we know. Alright, let's get right into it. Alright, so here I'll be jumping out. I know there's going to be players here. You could already see that from uh, this point of view, of course. So I know it's going to be players here. There's going to be one, two, I think I kill one, three, four. So there's going to be three players left when I jump down. Now, what I want to be doing here when I'm jumping down is these players are still alive. Uh, I don't want to be dropping near them. I kind of, I still want to drop on top. You know, I could drop here or here or here. But I want to, of course, take out these players. So what I want to do is drop on top. Now, if you know, if you play Renewal more, these, which I can perfectly highlight now, uh, these are perfect head glitches, uh, especially when they're broken down, like right here, you can see that they are perfect head glitches uh, to take out players and get a huge advantage. So what you want to be doing is when you drop down on these uh, platforms, you want to be dropping right here so you can head glitch which i'll be doing all right so here i noticed that no one's really looked at me they're all dropping down uh with the m5 you can take out players from this range pretty easily now here you can see how insanely good this head glitch is all right now here i could have chosen to reload my gun with the m5 um, the only problem is when I reload my gun, uh, I'm gonna give this player time to reposition. This is why here it is better to pull out the pistol and finish the player off. The moment it's not right to pull out a pistol uh, when you're in situations like this, if, if there were mo multiple people, like let's say if there was an extra player right here, then you kind of want to take cover, reload your primary gun, because you have a higher chance of it 1v2 versus uh, with your primary than with your secondary. Here it was uh, the perfect play to finish him off with a pistol. Otherwise he could have repositioned. Alright, reload the gun. Alright, what did we see on the minimap? Not much going on. We have D1 here. Uh, so we can just drop down pretty safely without really needing to look All right, I actually didn't know these players were here. I ran into three players all not looking towards me So right here, it doesn't kind of really matter which ones I shoot First now here I could have switched to a pistol easily, but again, I didn't know the situation fully upstairs Right here, I knew there was no one going to be spawning here anymore, so it was a 1v1. When we're back down here, I do not know the situation when I finish, after I finish off these two players. So here it is a better play to reload. Finish off the players. Luckily the guy was clueless. Also, what you have to notice here is how I jump back. So, I kill the two players, I run back. Then, before I'm fully done reloading, I already jump. Which could be risky, but if you know your reload time as well, you can see that when I'm done jumping around the corner, uh, I'm fully ready to shoot the player. So, here we go. 
shoot the players, reload, jump, and I'm instantly ready to shoot. Now I'm lucky, of course, the player is not looking at me, but uh, you get the point. So if you wanna like be efficient with these type of moves, know your reload speed and uh, know when you can like start jump around corners. So there you go. I finish off the player and now I have some time to reload. The two lifts are abo above, so there's not really a threat for me right now, besides players coming from this area. Uh, now, of course, since we have D1, it's time to move, move over to D2. Alright, so here you can already see the minimap, two players. Uh, the, the, the thing is, these players could be on top, uh, on top of the roof. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to check these corners first. Uh, the reason for that is that this is the biggest th uh, threat since most of the enemies that are here along this place they will be looking outside they will be looking towards this direction um so you have players right here uh so they'll be looking this way this is like the general direction because their spawn is right here our spawn is right here on the media map so in general enemies will always be looking this way of course this is very situational uh but so your biggest threat is always uh, this side and your least threat is always this side you can always keep it in mind to where enemies will be looking um, this is specifically for breakthrough of course so what i'll be doing is i'll be checking this side first pretty clear view here you can see i can watch the corner there's nothing really going on also check the rooftops people like to peek this very often uh, now i go look at the the red dots all right what is important here what i do is that i do not i do not run around the corner running around the corner will take longer for you uh, to pull up your weapon so keep that in mind i walk around the corner instead of run around the corner this way i'm ready to shoot as fast as possible Alright, took out the player. Now you can notice D2 is completely empty. Now this is important Important if you play the game a lot, you kind of start understanding spawns. The, the enemy team will start spawning on uh, this side of the map, right here. We have D2, some of them will spawn here. Uh, but since we have D1, and they can either spawn in their home spawn or on D2. Now, you want to obviously spawn closer to the action, so a lot of players will spawn in these areas right here. Uh, so I know this, so what I'll be doing is I'm going to be jumping down and I'll be looking for these uh, areas. Right now I'm alone on the flag, so for me it is better to actually try and continue hunting instead of capping a flag alone. The reason for that is capping flags alone takes a long time in the game. So you kind of want to avoid uh, avoid this and keep on slaying until your team comes to back you up. If you stay on the flag, it's also possible, but what I showed you here earlier, you can see that here, players can push from here, players can, they can come from all directions. So what I always prefer is I prefer to uh, keep on slaying until my team comes to fully back me up. So it makes for an easier cap. All right, now this is uh, a pretty risky play. This is not the smartest because I don't know what's going down, uh, going on down here. I 100% know there's gonna be players here since I already explained on D2 they're going to be spawning uh, alongside that area. Um, so this is a really risky play what I'm doing. Um, but I know I have cover from this pole, and what I know is they're gonna be often they're gonna be. Uh, running around these head glitches here. They like these places um, But I know they're gonna be spawning Along this area, so I have cover but this is not the smartest play in the clip luckily it works out though so I jump down go um, I Jump down. All right, so I see player here player here Bolty there this area is safe though. That is the most important part um, cause this is, this is pretty much going to be my, um, my survival spot for the next, um, I think 30 seconds that it's about. 
Um, so this is this is good. This is my first um, area that I need to check because this is where I want to be spending the next 30 minutes, and this is my only cover. Uh, now I notice I notice this player as well, and I notice I don't know if I see this player necessarily. I see him now, uh, but I definitely notice this player. Um, so I notice my my save zone is pretty much clear, the place where I want to be. This is where I want to be going fast. You can see me check right there. My teammate luckily takes him out. It is important to know I have a teammate here. The reason for that is is that I know this zone, everything everything along this side, is most of the time going to be clear. Um, and if it's not clear, this teammate is going to drop pretty soon. And then I have a little warning there as well. Um, so that is good to know. Alright, now this is pretty much going to be cover. Um, checking the minimap here. There's nothing really where I can see if there's going to be enemies. So I actually got a look and I see a player. Now I don't see another threat, so this is a pretty easy takeout. He doesn't see me. So I take this player out. Now I notice that there is an enemy here, which pretty much means they can be all around me. Now I'm kind of screwed to say. Sad. Notice the teammate here, so that player should be taken out. Okay, now with the teammate behind me, I don't have to check here anymore. Uh, I know that I know still players are going to be spawning here, as I explained earlier. So this will all be checking next. The reason, let me go back a little bit. The reason why I do not push this way is because I don't have cover this way. Uh, this will be way too exposed. If I'm going to push uh, this way, I have more control over the cover that I'm using instead of this. This is way too exposed. This is way more cover. I know there's players there. I choose to push this side though. You can see this is pretty much the only cover I got, but it's controlled cover because I know they're going to be spawning behind this area. I noticed two players here. Uh, what you'll see me do is I'm gonna pretty much block off this player by moving backwards a little bit. You see, I'm shooting this player while moving backwards, which means um, I'm pretty much completely blocking off this guy's view on me and gives me time to hopefully take out this player. I unfortunately don't succeed and the moment this guy pushes, this is when I switch. Obviously this guy is looking, I don't know where he's looking, he's looking somewhere that direction. This guy knows I'm here. The reason why I didn't take this guy out earlier is because I have to overextend. If we go back a little bit, if we go back to uh, this, if I go for this player, I need to push this way. I need, I need to go more into the open which means uh, I'm at more of a risk of dying, of course, because you want to force those one-on-one -on -one engagements in instead of one versus X engagements. That's why I first go for this player, and then I'll go for this player. It doesn't perfectly work out like that. So I switch. Now, I only have five bullets left, so I need to get back to cover and give myself some time to reload. All right, so quickly here and now let's go now we're going full survival instincts i see a player here um i know i cannot move towards this direction anymore that is simply not going to be possible the reason for that is there's a player that knows i'm there uh so this guy right here is my biggest threat so the only cover i pretty much have right now to not have to deal with this player that's along this direction and this player is here this is the only place where i'll be safe so i try to move that direction as fast as possible and i use this as cover and now i notice let me change color so it's a little bit easier to see probably one two three four and one behind this wall um which means I have to move closer to the wall. I cannot go backwards. If I move backwards, I'm going to be just as exposed as I am right now. So the only cover I have is to move closer to this wall. Go, I should be doing that right now. 
All right, you see me close distance to the wall. This pretty much blocks off all the enemies that were behind here and forces again a one-on-one -on -one engagement with this player. All right, now what I do, what often players will do is, let me scroll back a little bit, is now I know um, the enemy team has seen me kill this player. So they're gonna expect me to come from this angle around the wall. So this is why I give myself time to push the other side. You can see this player, you can see he's looking this way. Uh, the other players are probably too far away from the engagement, but you can clearly see that this guy is looking here. That's why I, um, I went the other way to be a little bit more unexpected. And I finish, finish him up with a lucky headshot. Here, little ammo left, so it's pretty much game over. So yeah, that's the analysis of that clip. Um, hope you guys learned something. What I pretty much really wanna explain in the video is how I use these poles as cover. It's very important to know how to position yourself against multiple enemies and how to use your cover correctly. Cause you cannot just stand behind cover and be like, oh, this is gonna work. You have to use it in the best way possible. So I hope the video was kind of useful. Hopefully it was interesting. Um, if you want to see more of this, be sure to subscribe because I will definitely be uploading uh, at least one more episode. And if uh, you guys are enjoying it a lot more, I'll continue the series. Um, so yeah, hopefully it was helpful. Let me know any feedback in the comment section and I hope to see you guys in the next video.